If you want to make some YouTube thumbnails inside of Photoshop and you're not quite sure how to start or what to do or what some best tips and tricks are, that's this video. We're not going to waste your time. Let's dive in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Loru, digital advertiser, content creator for the better part of 10 years now. And I said what I meant. We're going to make a thumbnail for you in Photoshop right now live. You saw the thumbnail we made when you clicked into this video. Let's go check it out. This video is actually made in tandem with a blog that we have, a full step-by-step -step guide of everything we're going to be talking about in written form. If you want to save that, the link will be in the description. So let's dive into Photoshop. If you want to check it out for free for seven days, we have a nice free trial link down there in the description for you as well. You start at the basics, you open it up. We're going to click new file. You need to make sure your pixels, that's the stuff right here, is set to 1280 by 1720 specifically. That's the ideal length and width of a YouTube thumbnail. Make sure that is correct. Press create. Wait for it to load. Here's your canvas. Now, the fun part is going to be you got to take a picture of yourself. And this is the easiest way to do this. Take out your phone, take a picture of yourself. I recommend getting a gimbal or some kind of tripod. We have a full gear list on our website as well. If you're an aspiring or established content creator, everything's in the description. You already know what it is. So go take a picture of yourself and then put it onto your computer. I already got a image ready to go. So you're just gonna drag and drop this image into the canvas. It's that easy. I had it on my desktop. I dragged it in. It's ready to go. You can move it around. So the first step is going to be just to kind of get it comfy, get it nice and good lack where you want it. No real wrong answers here. Just if you see that X that's going through it, that means that the free transform tool is on. If you ever want to enable the free transform tool, it's control or command T and you can see it disables and enables the ability to move this around. Okay. Now that we have this ready to go, we need to select the actual person in our headshot. We've got a lot of background. If you can take a photo with like a white background, black or a lime green, like a green screen background, that's ideal because it'll make this a lot easier. But for the sake of this, uh, I just did, you know, and hard to do background just to show you what's possible. Okay. So in order to select the actual subject in your image, you're going to go to the uh, select button that's right here in the top left corner. Okay. It might not look exactly like mine, but just mouse over it. You're going to see quick selection tool. You can click it and the mouse you're you're going to see is change this like circle with a with a plus on it. There's two ways that you can select the person. You can either paint inside the image. As you see, I'm holding down left click and it's 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 filling in where I want to select. You can press and hold alt and left click to remove your uh, selection. This is what you'll call the quick select tool. And this is typically how you're going to select objects. If you have like a book that you're trying to feature some gear that you're trying to showcase onto your video. This is really good for that. As you can see, it's pretty intelligent that it will, if you kind of tell it where to go, it'll do its job. That's how long it took. Okay, once you have everything selected, you're good to go. But I'm gonna show you one more way to do this. That's super easy. I'm gonna press and hold Control D to deselect what I just did. With the layer selected that I want, you can see where my cursor is. I'm gonna press Select Subject. And just like that, it's Adobe Photoshop is going to pick the person in the frame. We detail both of this in the blog as well. As you can see, it's not perfect. It didn't, it missed a little bit of in between the fingers here. That's again, where you just kind of take your press and hold alt and you just start re refining your goodies. Okay, you can come back up here and say, no, this is the finger, not that down there. Thank you very much. You'll notice that the screen changed a little bit. We still have the like select subject mask on. So it's still trying to learn where that stuff is. So that is super quick. It looks really good. So now that we've got our subject selected, we're going to right click inside of the uh, selection, press layer via copy. In about the middle of the right-hand side of the screen, there's a second layer. We could hide and unhide the background. And as you can see, we've got our selection. So you can take your move tool and move this around. You can once again, press and hold control and press T to get the free transform tool to make it bigger, smaller, and go from there, okay? So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna move my headshot into the corner and I really like this hand right here. So I'm gonna just move this hand up, okay? I'm gonna kind of make it more of a, a centerpiece of this whole thing. Now that we have our subject selected, we're gonna make a background to this. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. The easiest way that I know how to do it is just come down to this rectangle tool. Again, it might not look like this. You can right click it and press rectangle and just click and drag. We're gonna go the whole way around, make sure it snaps to the edges. And now you've got your rectangle. So you can make it a little bit wider than the actual canvas itself or you can just snap it right to there just to make sure there's no like missed edges. You can come through this fill section to mess with the color. And we're gonna go to gradient just to give a nice gradient effect. The top section of this bar is opacity. You could choose how much of the gradient is going through and the bottom section is color. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click on this. And as you can see, you can change it to whatever we uh, wanna do. But before we do color, 
let's come here and we're on a gradient instead of linear we're going to do radial i really like the way this looks on thumbnails specifically uh we're going to make this one we're going to make it darker on the outside so let's say that we are going towards a purple let's say we're going towards like a nice dark purple i think that sounds pretty good that looks great and then we're going to make this side a white again you're double clicking to get that effect and that's looking pretty good. All right, so we can you can mess with how intense this is of where the whiteness is, where the purple is by just moving these sliders around. You change the angle at which this is coming in. And I really like more white here. I think we're going to get more of a bright center because we're going to really call attention to the rest of our uh, headshot. So now that that's done, you're going to go back to the selector tool. That's the little mouse looking icon. And we're going to drag our rectangle below our headshot layer. Just like that, we've made a background for our tool. And like I said, the gradient's going to make the hand pop. It's going to look very nice around there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, so we're going to add some text now to our thumbnail. Text is an essential part of most, if not all, thumbnails. So we're going to click on this tool. We're going to click into the space, and you might get this weird looking window that's from Photoshop. It's fine. We're just going to type in thumbnail because this is going to be about thumbnails. Now, when you click out of it, we're going to go back to the selector. It's a little bit hard to know where and when you can move stuff around in Photoshop. It's one of my least favorite things about this platform. But again, you have to actually select the layer and then press Control T or Command T. You're going to see these boxes around it. Now we can freely move this word thumbnail around. You can transform it a bit. You can make it bigger, smaller. That's looking really nice where it is. If you want to edit the actual text, you have to go back to the text tool and select inside of it. And you'll notice now we can edit what's inside of the actual text. So that's how you make text move around text and edit text as needed. So I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to duplicate it. We're going to copy it and we're going to just click on this layer. Now we can freely move this around. I'm going to make my text say thumbnail in minutes. That way it looks like I'm saying five minutes with my hand. So and the reason why I didn't make new text layers, I just duplicated them specifically is because I wanted to save the size of the font here. I wanted to make sure that the fonts that I was playing with looked similar and uniform across the entire design. You don't want to have like different fonts, different uh, sizes, even different colors. It's going to be jarring and it's going to make people not want to click in because it's not going to be as clear as to what they're looking at. So a small tip when you've got the text tool is if you click into this, you're going to see the font on the top here. I like Roboto Slab. It's I highly recommend that y'all pick one font and use it for all of your thumbnails. That way people recognize your thumbnail by the font intrinsically. This is an important part of branding. It's having uniform branding throughout. Uniform branding throughout. Say that five times fast. Uniform branding throughout. So now that we've got thumbnail in minutes, I'm going to move these around to make them a little bit closer to the hand here to get some more unified spacing. I really like like how this is looking so far uh yeah this is looking really nice we're just going to leave that thumbnail there kind of your eyes kind of go towards the hand itself that's looking really really good so great so now that we have our text and our headshot like aligned and ready to go it looks kind of shallow okay it doesn't look like there's anything really dynamic happening so we're going to add some uh backgrounds and some ways to pop our headshot and our thumbnail so let's get our layer selected we're gonna click it. Then we're gonna right click that and go to blending options, okay? My face cam kind of covered that there, but right click it and go to blending options. You're gonna see this thing pop up. Now this is all the different options that Photoshop has, how to mess with that layer specifically. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to stroke and we're gonna click it. And the moment you, you click that you saw, we started to get some kind of pattern around our headshot. So this is great actually, that looks really, really good. Let's kind of reduce it a little bit to where it looks nice. Six pixels is good. Maybe we can go up to seven. You can use your arrow keys if you select in there that's pretty awesome you want to go to position outside if you go to inside it looks it looks a little bit funny you can play around with that if you would like center again is just a little bit strange you want it to be an outline and that's what stroke is for so that looks really great we don't want to do that same effect three times to our text what we're going to do is we're going to select all these we're going to press and hold shift and left click on minutes and it's going to select all of these different layers there's a little folder icon down here click that now we've grouped our text together. So if we want to come in and we select the group, we can move around everything at once. We don't, and then we can go into the group and then select an individual thing and still transform that as needed. So we don't lose functionality, we actually gain functionality there. So we're going to apply effects to this entire group. So same deal, right click it, go into blending options. It's the top option there. And we're going to do the same thing stroke. Now that we've got the outline of our uh, text, you're going to see that it looks, it doesn't look dynamic enough. So I'm going to go back to my headshot blending options. Again, you right click it, go to go to stroke. Let's go to color and we're going to select black, press okay and okay. And look how much better that looks. Look how, look how much more 
our headshot actually pops out comparatively to the text. The text is called out easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so we've got our text, we've got our headshot, we've got our outlines. We're gonna do one more thing to this and it's gonna be quite easy. We're going to add a, uh, the photo, we're going to do one more thing to this. It's going to be super easy. We're going to add the Photoshop logo right into there just so people could see thumbnail in minutes where? Thumbnail in minutes how? In Photoshop. So let me go find that logo. All right, I've got my Photoshop logo ready to go. I'm going to drag it and drop it right into the canvas. And as you can see, it's just, it's there. It's that easy. You just find the logo and drag and drop it. Now that we put the Photoshop logo in, we're going to give it the same treatment that the text and our headshot got. We're going to add some effects to it. I like to do this on most logos and some text that I have there. We're going to bevel and emboss this and look focus on the actual photoshop logo here with with your eyeballs see how it makes it look a little bit 3d how it gives it like this nice weighted curve to it i really like the way that looks so let's make let's make the depth uh play with the sliders here and really that's that's your photoshop career ladies and gentlemen is playing with these sliders making them look a little bit better and ladies and gentlemen that's a finished thumbnail. And right before we get to the end of this video, if you've come this far, then you're most likely an aspiring content creator. We have a content mentorship program that you can check out for free. It's in the description below. Check it out. We one-on-one -on -one mentor each and every one of you to make sure that you can win Twitch, YouTube, blogging, social media. I made an extra six figures last year after my day job using the systems that I'm gonna teach you to employ. Freelancing, portfolio creating, sales, content creation, tool setup. We got it all. So go check out that link and enjoy if that's something that you would like. Okay, back to the video. So the final thing we have to do is export this because this is a done thumbnail and just give yourself a nice pat on the back. Photoshop ain't easy. There's a lot of different tools coming in. You made a nice looking thumbnail. This is the thumbnail that you're going to see on our video. So the final thing to do is export. Go up to file. You press export and go to quick export as PNG. It's worth noting that there's a bunch of other complex things you could do with this. You can make it as crazy as you want to make it. But for the sake of YouTube, just quick export as PNG should be good. And that's it. Upload your thing to YouTube, get some clicks, grow your brand, enjoy. There's about to be a bunch of different videos to pop up that you can check out if you would like. We've got YouTube, awesome stuff, Twitch tips, gear guides, the sky's the limit. Go check out these videos. And if you enjoyed, make sure you sub. You already know what to do. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much.